bigger. This is Spencer, and this is Sean. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I guess I'm, I'm going to start out with a rather obscure question, and I just have to find out for this particular movie. I know that you have a, a, a real vomit policy when there's ever a vomiting scene in your films. Was did, was that held up in this one? As it, well? wasn't. it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. Was, this, um, was that the first well, first off, it, the when you're, when you're, when you're, this is my first union film, and uh, there are certain rules. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have my actors taking Epicac anymore. Plus, Epicac isn't even Available. It's hard to get now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we came up with our own little that that uh, that moment where she vomits in the toilet. We uh, it was all about the camera move and what we're not showing you when the camera is is panned away from her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I ask in part because uh, you know obviously it's like the one one little element that fits into your overall. Uh, I wouldn't call realist exactly, but more like hyper realist methods where you pick particular uh, aspects of a story to go very realist with, even in moments of uh, artifice. Um, and I think that definitely holds here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, uh, yes, I agree with you. I wish, you know, it's, 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 it's something that uh, what Spencer is referring to, if you've seen my other films, um, Tangerine, there's like a real vomit scene in Tangerine. And, Prince of Broadway, um, and it's just something that's sort of become a running joke in my films where we have to have not only a, a vomit scene, but we try for a real vomit scene. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but let's talk a little bit about, you know, how, how you work, how you create stories, and uh, while this one was uh, your first union shoot, uh, what were what were some of the similarities in your, your methods for making a film? Well, uh, we, we approached it the same way, you know, Chris Bergash, uh, I've written now, uh, we, we co-wrote the film together, we worked three times together, and um, we start uh, in a way where it's, uh, something sparks our attention. I mean, in this case, he brought the topic of the hidden homeless in Kissimmee and Orlando to my attention. I did not know about this, I didn't even know there was a term, the hidden homeless. Um, and this is a, a nationwide problem. It's actually an international problem. Um, but, um, and then, once we we decide to jump in, it's 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 we don't really we may have we might have a, a very very uh, light structure like a very like in this case we knew it was going to be a mother daughter story but that's it and and then it was about for us we feel it's very important often I'm making films I've made six films five of them are very much about communities I'm not a part of I'm, a, I'm an outsider to and. We, we've taken the time, we take the time to immerse ourselves um, and find collaborators within the community. So it's, it's, and that, that happened with this film. This film is actually, we tried to make this prior to, uh, to Tangerine, and we couldn't find financing. Um, and Tangerine really, I think, opened the doors for us in terms of you know, finding financing uh, and, uh, and allowed us to make this film. But so we had already started our research process. Actually, goes back over, you know, started five years ago, and um, the fact that there are, you know, still families, uh, still individuals um, uh, dealing with the effects of the the O eight recession, um, and it was still it was still happening as of as of two years ago, and uh, still is, and um, so we 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 thought we. At the time, we were upset we couldn't make this film, but but we saw that this is a continuing issue. It has not been resolved in any way, shape, or form, and it was something we still wanted to tackle. So when we had the opportunity to do it right, we we jumped on it. And one of the things that's really interesting about your your films um, is that uh, quite often, I mean, probably most of the audience here also knows Tangerine, so I'll refer to that one in particular. Uh, but they could easily be sort of eat your vegetables, social problem films, uh, and yet they're not, but they don't just sort of, you know, chuck the problem that's underneath for the sake of entertainment. There's, there's a way of like, you know, finding a real story within a problem rather than, um, you know, making something that 
something they can succeed as advocacy without that necessarily being the purpose, if that makes sense? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, I mean, that's what Chris and I wanted to do, especially with the last two films. And we saw that it worked to a certain degree with Tangerine, where we were, it was a, it is an issue film, it is a political film, but it's not, it, hopefully, it, uh, you tell me, uh, hopefully it isn't hitting the audience over the head, it's more easily digestible because of the fact that we're delivering it in this sort of, you know, comedy package, you know, this inter, we're, we're, we're keeping in mind that, you know, film is and started as an entertainment medium, and and we, we, we saw with Tangerine that because we, we made, it, there was this actual, like, there was an entertainment value to Tangerine that it reached more people, and, and, and the, the feedback that we've gotten and, and continue to get from Tangerine is just really, um, it means so much because uh, it, it, it seems like it actually did open people's eyes, and, 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 um, and I, I, to this day, I, I get messages on Facebook and Twitter saying, you know, I, I never thought that I would uh, connect uh, with, uh, with um, you know, a, a, a trans woman of color who's working on the corner of Santa Monica and Highland, but I'm, I feel so connected to, to, uh, to um, Alexandra. And I, I want to help the real Alexandras out there. What can I do? So we saw that there was a real, there was a real impact. I mean, during the 90 minutes, people had fun. People, you know, were entertained. But they were they. What from what I noticed, you know, audiences were then they go home with, with which is what our intention was to, to go home thinking about the issue, um, and 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 if they they feel so inclined to to try to do something about it. Uh, this one right in the, the title, obviously, The Florida Project, and, uh, it, you know, obviously you had a, a particular uh, aspect of our culture that is, um, in, in the way it's manifest in Florida, but um, what, what else drew you to Florida? Because this is obviously a, a very particular kind of environment, the way that you play it out in the film. And then, just my last uh, kind of asterisk to that, um, Tell us a little bit about the title itself, The Project of Florida. Well, it's actually, if you put the Florida Project in quotes into Wikipedia, and you guys will see there's actually a double meaning to the title, which I, it's sort of sensitive, I don't want to actually state it. So it's up to you to do that. Thanks. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, but um, I, uh, what was the first part of the question? Real quick, I'm sorry. Well, just, just the attraction it's been a long Florida. day, sorry. No, the attraction of Florida. Oh, the, the attraction of Florida, okay. So this is what happened, Chris, Burgosh, who I co-wrote the screenplay with, has a very personal, close connection to Orlando and Kissimmee. He loves everything Disney, everything Disney, and he knows Disney in and out. His mother lives in Kissimmee. He, he. There were several articles written, you know, journalistic articles about the situation that's happening uh, in the budget motels along Route 192, uh, right outside. Um, right outside the parks. Um, so when we started doing our research, we found out this isn't just Kissimmee and Orlando, but we understood why journalists were focused on this. It's because of the juxtaposition. It's because of this very sad juxtaposition of having homeless kids living right outside what you would consider the most magical place on earth for children, a place designed and created for children. So, so we thought that we wanted to do that to show that if it can happen here, it can happen anywhere, you know? And, and uh, but we are very, during my Q and A's, during, you know, the website, where the, word, the, the message that we're trying to get out there is that it might ha be happening in your own community. So, so yes, there are, we'll be using the A24 website and our, and our Florida Project uh, website to point people towards information um, and, and, and agencies that they can support. Uh, in that area, but also on a national level. I think it's very important to keep in mind that this is a national problem. Uh, we have this going on in Boston. It might be happening here, I don't know. Uh, the OC, uh, San, San Bernardino. So it's... Um, I just went on a tangent there. I'm so sorry. I'm, no. I'm all over the place, guys. <laughs> it's, I'm very, <laughs> I'm, it's been a long day of press. Um, well, one of the things, uh, you know, having lived in Florida myself and spent a bit of time in Orlando uh, that was interesting was the... Uh, the particular kind of um, uh, the in, in the orbit of Disneyland, there's all this kind of uh, CD theme park land that you really capture. Oh well, yeah, the bright colors from of, a filmmaker's 
point of view, when I first heard about this, I also, I have to admit that there was this, from the aesthetic point of view, I, I, I had eye candy. Uh, I was given production value because Route 192 is lined with uh, these small businesses that uh, feed off of Disney and are Disney themed and they're trying to attract the same tourists. So you have something like the Magic Castle, which is not affiliated in any way with Disney, but is, is using its mythology to, to attract tourists. And you have this up and down Route 192. It's not just the motels. It's also, you know, the ice cream stands, the the uh, the, the diners, everything. Um, and so uh, the way they, they sell tickets there, the, the ticket booths are all very colorful, et cetera. And so uh, there was a lot to play with with aesthetic, aesthetically. And, uh, and I, I knew that that would, um, I was also, you know, making a, ch a children's story, and I was, I was very much aware that. Well, I look at my own childhood, and I think my senses were stronger then. My strengths, my senses were more acute. You know, I, I, the colors were brighter. The, the, I, I could hear more decibels, different decibels when I was younger. And so we wanted to play with that. So, given we were given this very colorful landscape, this sort of poppy landscape, and, 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 and my wonderful. DP, Alexis Abe, was able to just punch it up a hair, you know, just, just giving it a slight enhancement to, to put us, hopefully, in the, in, not through the eyes of a child, but just in uh, feeling as if we're, we're absorbing that world with the senses of, of a child, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, 